All right, what's up, everybody? Okay, so how many of you, um, get frustrated when people say no? Just type in chat box, okay. How many of you guys get frustrated when people say no? And how many of you, when people say no, not only do you get frustrated, but you start to question like, God, like, am I even cut out for this? Is this worth my time, right? Do I really wanna do this? Okay. So what I wanna to talk to you guys about tonight, you guys and gals, ladies and gents, is a couple of principles to start thinking more long-term. Because when you commit to a long-term mindset, the no's don't matter anymore. And when you commit to a long-term mindset, rejection becomes irrelevant. And when you commit to a long-term mindset, you inherently understand so many variables that go into the long-term result that hopefully you're looking to create. Because the question you can ask yourself is, what kind of business do I want? Do I want a business where I have to constantly acquire customers and make a couple hundred bucks here and there and I'm constantly having to replace people? Or do I want a business where five years from now, seven years from now, or 10 years from now, I can put myself in a position to go on holiday, to take my phone, put it in the safe, not turned on for a week, maybe two weeks, maybe a month like we've done, and still have my business paying me week after week, day after day, month after month. Which one do you prefer? A is the short term, B is the long term. You type in the chat box. Which one do you really want? Do you want A or B? Okay, great. Now, in order for you to create a long-term sustainable business, it's the same as creating a long-term sustainable relationship. Now, how many of you have gotten into relationships in the past where you, you are allured by somebody, right? You are, um, they're, you're mesmerized, you're enchanted, it's exciting, right? Like you're, there's, there's just so much happening, you feel so deeply connected. And you notice that there are some things, some red flags, right? Some, some red flags, but because you're so enamored with the idea that what do we do with those red flags? We kind of sweep them under the rug. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're in the relationship maybe six months, a year, two years, and what used to be cute is now annoying. And you used to be funny is now insulting. And what used to be exciting and spontaneous is now predictable and boring. And what used to be considered a fun joke, you now experience as criticism, right? How many of you have had that experience? And now all of a sudden, all those red flags are coming to the surface and you find yourself in this relationship going, I don't want to be in this relationship. And I can't believe I ignored all those red flags. How many of you, and maybe I'm alone in this, I don't know, but I get the feeling I'm not, right? How many of you have, and this doesn't have to be a romantic relationship either. This could be friendships as well, right? Where you get into a relationship with somebody of any kind and we ignore the red flags. And the reason we ignore the red flags is because we want A, not B. We want the quick hit, the quick fix, the person that's gonna say yes to us, the person that's gonna wanna make, that makes us feel good in the moment. But a business is just like a relationship in that when you build a relationship from the beginning, on fundamental foundational principles and you don't allow for the red flags to get swept away but rather you put yourself in a position to create an environment where you are always moving according to principles you're more likely to create an environment where you have a business five seven ten years 15 20 years 30 years down the road so i'm just going to share some principles with you to help you start thinking in the longer term so that if you have a challenging week or maybe you have a challenging month maybe you have a three month period where it's just really challenging just nobody's getting started and people are dropping off you still can stay within these principles knowing that you're running a marathon and you're not just running a hundred meter dash okay so the first one is this the first one is if you want a business that pays you for life if you want income for life then you've got to treat this like any profession. And what that means is, is it means committing to the long term. How many of you have started the bottom of a company, right? You interview and you start, as the, start at the bottom. Maybe you start as an intern, maybe you start as an administrative assistant, right? And you're not making a lot of money. 
but you join that company with the idea that, wow, you know what, maybe, you know, in four or five years, I can move up to being a manager. Maybe in a couple years after that, I can be a director. And maybe if I'm lucky, you know, 15, 20 years down the road, I can be a vice president of a company. How many of you ever gone along that pathway? And it's totally okay, right? How many of you guys have had that experience? So you've been willing early on, you're accustomed to this. You're accustomed to the idea of paying your dues. You're accustomed to the idea of paying your dues. But for some reason, we come into network marketing and we think, well, I want the money that I see all these top leaders making, but I want it now. And we feel like we, skip paying our, we can skip paying our dues. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to really, really adopt treating this like any profession. And what that also means is being willing to learn the skills, to learn the skills. And the other thing is being an acceptance of the reality that just like any career, your first couple of years inside of network marketing, you're going to get paid in direct proportion. You're going to get paid in direct proportion to who you've been up until this point in your life. I'm going to say that again. In network marketing, your first couple of years, you're going to get paid in direct proportion to who you've been up until this point in your life. The same way where if you were a recent graduate, right, and you go to work for a big company, you're going to start at the bottom. Why? Because you don't necessarily have the requisite experience to command a higher level salary. Okay. So when it comes to learning the skills and it comes to paying your dues and it comes to understanding that you'll get paid in direct proportion to who you've been, being coachable is arguably the most important thing you could ever be. Now, I know a lot of people that say they're coachable, but what does being coachable really look like? Being coachable means, even if I don't, dis even if I don't necessarily like what you're coaching me to do, and I don't necessarily agree with what you're coaching me to do, I'm going to trust the process, and I'm going to take action on that thing as quickly as I can so I can learn it, okay? So number one is treat it like any profession. Number two, number two, is you gotta fall in love with the profession. You gotta fall in love with the business model of network marketing. You gotta fall in love with the business model of network marketing because if you don't, you have no reason to stay stuck in for the long term. So what I want you guys to start to do is I want you to start to study a little bit more when it comes to the network marketing business model. If you chose B, I want you to read books on network marketing. I want you to get on the Pivot on Purpose webinars, not to hear me talk, but to hear the conversation over and over and over again about the business model of network marketing. Why? For the same reason that if you wanted to have a career in fashion and you got an internship at Vogue, for example, right? And they had you in the mail room every single day, but they said, hey, look, once a day we have our design meeting and your job is to fill coffee, but also pay close attention. You're gonna go around that room pouring people coffee, but you're gonna be obsessed with absorbing every bit of information that you hear being talked about by the editors of the magazine. Why? Because you wanna grow inside of the fashion industry. If you want to become a personal trainer, you have to study every detail there is to become an excellent personal trainer. If you want to be an actor, you have to study other actors, study films, study resources. If you want to be an athlete, what do athletes do aside from practicing? They study film. They spend more time studying film than they do on the actual field. So you got to be willing to study, okay? Study. And when it comes to network marketing, Here's how I want you to think about studying. Learn it, do it, teach it. Learn it, do it, teach it. Now, why is it important for you to teach it? What's that third part all about? Why is it important? Why is it important to teach it? Creates duplication. That's right. That's right. So you can apply your knowledge to somebody else and empower them. So that's number two, is falling in love with the business model of network marketing. Because here's what I will promise you. If you really get rooted into understanding this business model and how it really works, and you don't need to know all the ins and outs of it, but if you really start to get, not just what's possible in network marketing, but the functionality of the business model, 
if you really start to get that in an intelligent, intellectual way, which you're all capable of doing, your conversations are gonna be more powerful. The certainty with which you speak is gonna be way more appealing and intoxicating, quite frankly. You'll be far more enrolling. Because when people have a conversation with you, they're gonna to listen to you and go, yeah, this person really knows what they're talking about. The same way as if you spent three or four years at Vogue and you went off on your own to be a personal stylist and somebody said to you, why should I hire you as a stylist? And you said, look, I studied for five years under the chief editor of Vogue magazine and I know this, this, and this, and this about this industry. They're gonna go, you're hired. I've learned from the best. And I'm gonna pass on what I've learned to you. Not that I'm the best, but you have access to the best, some of the best in the world in this company. You really do. So don't just fall in love with the financial freedom of network marketing. Fall in love with the mechanics of how you can create that freedom in this company. Can I say it again? Don't just fall in love with the financial freedom of what's possible. Fall in love with the mechanics of how you can create that freedom. Number three, think like a CEO. Think like a CEO. And what that means is it means understanding that everything that you do matters. Every Facebook post matters. Every campaign you run matters. Every conversation you run matters. Every single thing that you do has a positive or negative implication on the domino effect that's going to occur in your business model. And what I want you to think about is when you go to make decisions, stop and take a step back and ask yourself the question, am I making a smart decision or a healthy decision? Now, what's the difference between the two? A smart decision is an easy decision to make. A healthy decision is a situation that you avoid making. What CEOs do is we step into the fire, we observe the whole thing, and we go, what's the healthy decision for my business right now? And why is it important to make healthy decisions? because your business is an organism. It's a living, breathing organism. And if you don't clean up and if you don't treat the root and you just treat the symptoms, and that's what we'll look at it is smart decisions, treating the symptoms, healthy decisions, treating the root of the problem. The other thing I want you to do when it comes to thinking like a CEO and thinking like a business owner, and this is going to help a lot of you when it comes to feeling like in the paying your dues process where maybe you feel like you're putting out a lot more effort than money is coming into your house. I'm about to tell you something that's the cardinal sin of old school shady uplines in network marketing. And here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to say the very first thing that I taught Eden early on, one of the very first things, and it's a fun little saying, it goes like this. Don't get high on your own supply. And what that means is, for as exciting as it is to want to consume tons of isogenics products, you got to think like a business owner, you got to think like a CEO. I only want to encourage you to spend money on products that is level with what you are already spending on food. So you're literally replacing groceries where possible. So you're not overextending your budget. I don't want you to take a bunch of money that you've just made and reinvested it back into ordering a bunch more products for your household. Now think about what I'm saying for a minute. Does it benefit me if, if I say, spend all your money, order a bunch of products? Of course it does. You guys understand how the comp plan works. But I don't think like that. I think like a CEO. And that's how I want you to think. Because let me ask you a question. Is it better for you to have one person, right, have one person order 500 BV in a month or to have that same person, okay, spread that 500 BV out over five months. It's A or B. It's A or B. And one of the things that early networkers do when they come into network marketing is you make a little bit of money and then you over leverage what you're making into additional products. And now your profit is actually a deficit. And that's not a winning business model. So again, I want you to be smart about your budget. And again, I'm telling you right now, if there was a camera on me, live streaming me into another group of like six and seven figure income earners that I'm in right now, they'd be like, he's crazy. That's so crazy. 
but I'm not crazy. I'm not teaching for today. I'm teaching for five years from today. And that's how I want you to think. I don't want you to learn for today. I don't want you to do for today. I don't want you to teach for today. I want you to learn, do, and teach for three, four, five, seven, ten 10 years from today. That way when people say no to you, that way when people call you crazy, that way when people question what you're doing, you understand that you're not doing it for now, you're doing it for tomorrow. That long-term, brick-by-brick, sound business principles. Yes, network marketing is fun. Yes, it's an incredible community of people. Yes, it's a phenomenal platform for personal growth. And at the end of the day, if you want to learn business in a way that won't cost you tens of thousands, about hundreds of thousands of dollars, learn business principles like the one I just shared with you inside of your network marketing business. How many of you guys can get down with that? How many of you guys can get down with me saying to you or encouraging you to manage your money so that it doesn't feel like you have so much more going out than you have coming in? Because you've got a lot going out versus what you have coming in. Guess what's going to start to happen? You're going to resent the products and you're going to resent the business. And then it's really going to feel like, God, I'm putting in all this effort. I'm not making enough money. And I don't want you to think like that. Be smart with your spending. Be smart with your money. Put money aside for your taxes. Treat this like a business. Treat it like a business. Make intelligent financial decisions in your household with how you treat the money that comes in. And more money will come to you. That's how money energy works. And we'll do another call another time on money energy, okay? Next one, number four. Macro vision, macro vision. The macro vision, big vision. I want you to dream. I want you to think about the future. I want you to see yourself however it is that you wanna see yourself. And what I want you to do is I want you to take that idea, I want you to wrap it up in a little balloon, and I want you to just let it go out into the ether. And then what I want you to focus on are your everyday micro choices and actions. One of the biggest reasons we get frustrated in business, one of the re biggest reasons we get frustrated in anything, quite frankly, is we set these massive, huge, audacious goals and dreams and intentions, which are all wonderful. But in reality, they're far away. They're really far away. But what I found is just like climbing a mountain, the more you step on the mountain, the more the mountain shrinks. So take that macro goal, take that macro intention, take that macro vision, toss it out into the ether and focus less on that while keeping it in your mind's eye, right? Keep the main thing the main thing but solely focused on daily consistent activity. And a lot of you have heard me say this, but I'm gonna say it again and again and again, that big things, huge things, massive things happen when small things get all the love. Big things happen when small things get all the love. One of the biggest reasons that you feel so far away from some of the goals that you set for yourself is you want to go from A to Z without going B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. Now the next one, number five, I believe, is a big one. It's staying out of comparison. Staying out of comparison, because that's a big one. I don't know that there's anything that gets people more stuck than comparison. But let me ask you a question. If you decided and committed to climbing Mount Everest, if you committed and decided to climbing Mount Everest, and you went with a team of people to climb Mount Everest, and the only goal was for you to reach the top of Mount Everest, and one of those goals is to survive climbing Mount Everest. Would, your, would you be looking behind you? Would you look, be looking ahead of you? Or would you be looking straight down in front of you, just focused on the very next step? Which of those three? Behind you, ahead of you, or straight down on the very next step? 
you'd be looking right in front of yourself, right down at the next step. Because when you're looking at what my very next step is for growth, what's my next step for, for growth? What's my next step for expansion? What's my next step for movement up the mountain? My next step has absolutely nothing to do with the person who's in front of me or the person who is behind me. And if all I care about is getting to the top of Everest, then it shouldn't matter to me what people are doing in front of me, behind me, or beside me. Comparison mode. I promise you that if you're committed to creating abundance, you'll stop living in comparison because living in comparison is living in scarcity. Abundance cannot exist while in comparison. Think about it for a moment. Whenever you are in comparison of yourself with anyone else, you automatically tell the universe or God, whatever it is for you, nope, please do not bring any abundance into my life. I'm saying it loud and clear because I'm so consumed by what other people are doing that I'm just gonna pay attention to what they're doing as opposed to focusing on what I'm capable of doing. So that's number five. Okay, number six. We've got two minutes. Let's see if I can do these six and seven. Number six, once you start, never stop. Once you start, never stop. Quitting is not the disease. Quitting is the death. The disease is starting and stopping that leads to the death of quitting. The disease is starting and stopping that leads to the death of quitting. Find a way every day to move your business forward. Find a way every day to put one step in front of the other to climb up the mountain. Find a way, no matter what is happening in the world around you, to be progressive and proactive in your activity. Find a way. Number seven. Be your word. Do what you say you're going to do. Be your word. Do what you say you're going to do. And yes, that means keep your word and be your word and do what you say you're going to do when it comes to your commitments to others. But more importantly, be your word with yourself. Do what you say you're going to do. If you say you're going to reach out to 15 people this week, do that thing. Be your word. You want to know one of the biggest reasons why we fall into comparison, why we go into sabotage, why we don't get the results that we want, and then we start stopping and start stopping and eventually quit? You know why? Because we don't believe that we're capable. And why don't we believe that we're capable? Because we don't trust ourselves. So when you are your word and you keep your word to yourself and you do what you say you're going to do, guess what happens? Guess what happens? You strengthen that belief. You learn how to count on yourself. You learn how to build confidence, exactly, Sid. And guess what? People do business with people whom they know, like, and trust. And if I don't trust me, why should you trust me? So quick review. Treat it like any profession. Fall in love with the business model and network marketing. Think like a CEO. Macro vision versus micro daily choices. Staying out of comparison. Once you start, never stop. Quitting is the death. Starting and stopping is the disease that leads to the death. And last but not least, be your word and do what you say you're going to do. It's six o'clock on the dot, nine o'clock on the East Coast. I'm going to post in the team page, what did you learn? Have a phenomenal week, everybody. Lots of love. Thank you for your leadership. And we'll see you guys soon.